density is required as the mass divided by the volume. So all we need to do for this practical is measure those two things practically, and then we've got an answer for our density. So let's look for a regular solid first. So that will be a cuboid um, or a cylinder, but realistically it's going to be a cube or a cuboid. To find the mass, we place the object on a balance. Now. Balance comes up in mark schemes. I wouldn't say scale, because scale could be a scale of anything, um, or measuring scales is fine. I prefer balance. So that's the easy bit. Next, to measure the uh, height and the length and the width of the object, we are going to use a ruler. Please make sure you include your equipment. Okay, it's an obvious one, but ruler. To find the volume, you then multiply those three lengths together. So the volume of any cuboid is just the length, height, and width multiplied together. Then use the equation to find the density. So we would mentioned the equation again, even though it's given to you, mass divided by volume, and then sometimes you're asked to compare it to a, true, a value for that material and find out what material it is. Is. An irregular solid is a bit trickier. Now, by irregular solid, I mean anything that's not a um, regular cuboid or sphere or um, cylinder, anything like that. So it could be, I don't know, a piece of metal, a screw, a statue, anything like that. Now, the first step is exactly the same. To measure the mass, we are going to place it on a balance. Same as before. To measure the volume is a bit trickier. There's a couple of sub-steps here. So to measure the volume, we can't measure the length, width, and height because it's not a regular shaped object. So we're going to use one of these. This is called either a displacement can or a Eureka can. So essentially what we do is you fill um, the Eureka or sometimes called the displacement can um, to just below the spout with water. Now, that bit's really important, we'll come on to later. Um, then you're gonna slowly lower the object into um, the uh, displacement can, and you're gonna collect the water um, from the spout in a measuring cylinder, really important this bit, a measuring cylinder just below the spout to collect all the different drops of water that come out once you put the object in. Now, the reading um, or the amount of water um, that's in the measuring cylinder is the volume. Okay, so the volume of water, measuring so the measures volume, that's the only way to get the volume. Once you've done that, same step is, uh, the last step is the same as before. You're just going to do the mass divide by volume to find the density. Now, you could be asked to find the density of a liquid, okay, which is uh, even easier than the first one, I would say, because um, first of all, you're going to put your beaker um, on a scale, uh, sorry, on a balance, beg your pardon, measuring scales or a balance. Then, Instead of uh, measuring the mass this time, what you're going to do is you're going to zero it, essentially. So make the mass zero um, when there's a beaker on it. Now, the reason for that will be clear in a second. So it measures zero. Then you're going to pour in whatever liquid you're measuring. And then the new mass, so the, what the reading is now, equals the mass of the liquid. Okay, so you haven't had to do any subtracting. You just zero the start and that becomes easier. Um, the volume you can measure using the uh, little gradients and the, um, the scale on the side of the beaker, or you could use a measuring cylinder, then just use the equation mass divided by volume to find the density of that liquid. Okay, so you do need to know all three, but there are similarities between them. So um, different errors then you could encounter during this experiment. Uh, we're going to deal with the irregular solid, because uh, that's by far the most errors you can have. So the issue might be that when you lower it in, water splashes when lowered, or if you don't fill the spout fully. That could lead to the volume you measure, the water that comes out, being lower. So it could be a lower volume, which means the density you record might actually be, be a bit higher. You could also have, when measuring the mass of the um, solid or liquid, uh, a zero error on the balance. You could also have something called a parallax error, um, only for the solid, uh, regular solid, when you're reading using a ruler, or with the measuring cylinder um, when you are reading the volume. Okay, check out my other video if you're not sure what a parallax error is.